clearly there's a ton of potential. What motivates you to include local and regional ingredients on your menu? Well, it's very simple. It doesn't make sense if we have the local quality ingredients in our region. Um, it doesn't make sense on a business point of view and, and morally to bring ingredients from another part of the world. Therefore, uh, at Le Bernardin, we make sure that we have as much as we can local ingredients. When I call local, I mean, for the fish, the fish is moving. <laughs> so it's from uh, uh, Florida, I mean, it's, it's East Coast fish. And what I call local for produce is as much as we can from New York State, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and, and the region. Um, and, and what is important to us as well is uh, the quality of the products. And also, if we can find organic, it's something that we definitely look for. for. We um, have a very different kind of business than, than Eric's. Uh, we're caterers, which means you tell your clients what to do, and my clients tell me what to do. Uh, Don't let them do it. Okay, I'm, I'm taking notes today. Uh, so it's interesting. So we have a, a, just a full range of demand for, for what people want. But years ago, uh, we, started, we started farming in 07, which I like to say was before green was the new black. And um, we did it for two reasons. And these are the reasons that we really drive local food. One is because it tastes better. Uh, I'm going up to the farm after uh, our talk today uh, because tomorrow's Earth Day and tomorrow's also farmer's, Farmer Bob's birthday. So where else to be but at Kachki? Um, and I'll bring down some spinach. It'll be the last spinach in the greenhouses before we turn over to tomatoes. And I will tell you, that spinach is unlike any other spinach you've ever eaten. And I don't know who gets to put spinach that fresh on their plates, uh, because it'll go out Wednesday, Thursday, the rest of the week. The shelf life is so different because it's so fresh. So the, one of the reasons that we like to buy locally is because the flavor profile is extraordinary. The other reason for buying locally, for growing it, anybody here have a home garden? <laughs> okay, I mean, you know, you know what love is? You, you love your kids, right? Yeah, most of the time, I'd say. <laughs> your spouse, maybe. Not today. Your kids you love. But you know what you really love? You love your vegetables. And that powerful connection when you're growing something, or you know where it grew, or you know the farmer, you can feel that love. And I always thought if we could sort of surround ourselves with that sort of a relationship to food, you would taste it on the plate. So that's what drives me. And I was motivated uh, early on, uh, not just by flavor issues, but by the fact that, uh, you know, I would go visit these farms and a lot of them were struggling economically, as we were ourselves when, uh, when I started. So, you know, as we became more uh, established or more successful, if you will, you know, I felt it was a, a sort of a duty and obligation to uh, help the farmers produce better foods, uh, including dairy, not just cheese. Now, I was just looking at a list that I, I got from my buying department today, and we have, we have about 20 cheeses uh, from immediately in local. I'm not talking about New England and Vermont that has more variety. New York, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. So uh, that, that's a lot, you know, uh, historically for us. But I think that the uh, notion that local food would be the, the umbrella of, the, uh, of our industry nationally um, seems like, so whether you call it slow food, whether it's organic, whether it's real food, however it's determined, obviously we all feel that it's very important but clearly, you know, as Eric pointed out, that may not have much to do with olive oil yet, orange juice, or whatever it is that we're going to source, you know, from other places. So for us, it's still about flavor, it's still about value, but it's also about helping out the dairy farmers and the cheese makers get established. And I'll, I'll be quite honest with you, it's been extremely difficult. Um, this is something that I've dedicated 10 years to at least 10 years working really hard on because it's the platform that I have with my TV show. I think, you know, we, we always tell stories about 
uh, farms in every single episode. We don't come out and say it, but it's, it's the most crucial thing to me along with showing family meals. Um, and one of the things that I find most amazing that I'd like to put a big underline item across is you have, you have a chef in a restaurant that is universally regarded as one of the handful, and I mean that literally, handful greatest restaurants in the world with an incredible evangelism for fresh product, local product, and treating things seasonally and with respect. You have one of the largest catering companies in America, three largest, you said, that has, and I've been in a lot of your events, upon whose foundation you have decided to underscore the family form, both, both to supply yourself because it's what you believe in, right? And you have a, a cheese shop that I go to every time I'm in New York City. I can't believe it's been 43 years. I must be getting to be really fucking old. Um, the, uh, no, but you know, one of the one of the great places where one of the few cheese shops, by the way, to Liz's point about telling customers what to eat, where someone you go into a cheese shop, you're like, I want that Gruyere. You know, I've got ten bucks. I want that piece. You're one of the few guys where in your shop people come in and say, what should I get, right? So the opportunity to enforce the, the, the farm, and I hate this phrase, farm to table aesthetic is so ripe there and yet we're just getting started. It has taken 25 years very slowly in my professional food lifetime to see the social change movement necessary to exact the right terms start to just take hold. Lo is local elitist? Um, and that might be a barrier for some people to say, I want to buy local, I want to put it on my menu. And I don't think it is elitist. It can be, and I think it can easily be misconstrued that way. Um, but I think the challenge for us as food professionals is to find the products, uh, maybe buying in season, you know, buy a whole lot of tomatoes in August when they are dirt cheap. I mean, the farmers are practically giving them away and do something that preserves them into the next season. Think a little more strategically or look at different kinds of products that are, that are affordable. Um, work with suppliers to be able to buy strategically and affordably and put it on your menu. So I think that barrier in terms of price can be frightening, but there are ways around it. We have to use the media and, and also educate young generation um, how to shop and how to uh, shop, obviously, produce vegetables, uh, fruits, everything else, uh, and to create some, some meals that are uh, not only delicious, but are, are also supporting the community. It's very important to support the community. When I came to, the, to this country, it was 20 something years ago, I was amazed how cheap the food is here compared to Europe, um, because I didn't have any other uh, reference. But the food, the food in America is very inexpensive. You can go to those mega markets um, that sell underwear, tires, Christmas trees, oranges, apples, cheese, in the same area like that, right? And, and get it for super cheap. But if we want to uh, support the locals, very often the locals are small farmers, and it's, it's a higher cost to produce quality ingredients than it is to, to produce mass uh, for the mass market. So if we can change the mentality of the consumer, like I mentioned before, through education, through uh, me media exposure, um, if people are willing to pay 20 cents extra or 50 cents extra every two pounds to get those local quality ingredients, then we will have won the battle. Baldor has worked aggressively when Senator Clinton was our senator and initiated the farm to fork from first time I heard upstate to downstate. And we are currently working with Senator Gillibrand. I had a crazy idea of buying a greenhouse in upstate New York and growing eight months, nine months out of the year and taking the three hottest months when our local farmers are growing, shut the greenhouse down to clean it and make it a consolidation point for the local farmer to bring their stuff that are having trouble getting it to downstate. And I think if we do that, 
and we do it with the awesome food safety that Baldo provides with their guidance and sometimes upfront seed money, I think we can have a tremendous impact in helping this thing move. So a big round of applause for please for our, our guests. <laughs>